What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Clear Talk. On this episode, I go super deep sharing my genuine reaction to the whole George Floyd situation and the stuff happening in America. And then we go into, is a burning desire something you're born with or can you teach it to yourself? And lastly, is it better to work hard or work smart? Enjoy the show. Welcome back to Clear Talk. This is the number one show for entrepreneurs who need clarity. I'm your host, Armin Chaffee. Welcome everyone on Facebook right now. And what's going on everyone on Instagram? Today is gonna be a powerful show on YouTube if you're watching this right now. Look, if you like content to help you achieve your entrepreneurial goals or how to help you develop yourself into a business owner, a leader in your business or in your life, then hit that subscribe button and hit that little notification bell because sometimes YouTube forgets to tell you that I just came out with a new episode. If you're on Facebook, do a quick share challenge and share this video so that more people can hop on and uh, hear some great information that could help them in their life. Um, so hit that share button and, um, and hit the like or heart or care button you know, honestly, hit any of the buttons. I'm, I'm cool with it. And on Instagram, if you guys are on, hit that heart button so I know you're there. Say hi, comment what's up. Maybe comment your city so I know where you're from. We got some people right now uh, getting on. What's going on, everyone? And if you're on Instagram, by the way, sh- send this to someone. DM it to someone saying, hey, man, you got to see this. You got to ask a question here. And again, I'm always going to say because I want to answer your questions. If you want your questions answered live on the show every Monday at 12 p.m. Eastern Time, then go to askarmin.com and uh, submit your question there and I'll shout you out on the show. And uh, yeah, and we'll, we'll uh, get your questions going. Um, before we start the show today, uh, I need to address a few things. So I've, I've, been, I've been good, man. Um, my goals are good. Life is good. My mind's good. My heart's good. Everything's good. I'm, I'm a super happy, grateful person. I realized yesterday I was meditating for about an hour. I realized yesterday there are three emotions that I'm very familiar with that I believe they're emotions of God. Um, One is love. That's an obvious one. The other one is inspiration. Uh, The emotion of inspiration is a beautiful emotion. I think it's it's the emotion of God. And uh, the reason I say that is because when you're inspired or when you feel inspiration, um, you do things. You, You change. You grow. You make decisions. So I've been, I've been having the, the privilege of feeling that feeling of inspiration for a, a while now, but very more so recently, a lot more. And the third one is gratitude because the emotion of gratitude eliminates everything from your mind that's negative. You can't be grateful and fearful at the same time. You can't be grateful and stressful at the same time. The emotion of love, inspiration, and gratitude, there, I'm sure there's other emotions that represent a God-like feeling in life, like a positive feeling, but... For me, I'm saying um, those three are I'm familiar with. On a daily basis, I feel love, I feel inspiration, I feel gratitude. Um, but yesterday, I was with family, and um, I'm not connected to social media, so I don't know what's going on until I'm with like family. And so I just had my first uh, impression to see what's going on in the world. And uh, as I sit here every day working, I isolate my mind from the outside world, and I focus on my own life. But when I laid my eyes upon the, the crap that's just going on in the world, um, I got to say, I was, I was sad. I was sad. I was seeing videos of people breaking into stores and stealing things. Like daylight. The hundred people walking out of Nike stores with things in their hands. And Louis Vuitton. I saw one with a store owner trying to just protect his store. And at least ten people jumped him. And, and he was on the ground like twisted I'm sure he died he looked dead um, I see I've, I've been seeing a lot of stuff I've seen cops running people over with cars um, tear gas it's disturbing eh? and um, my family kept saying you know this affects all of us I go yeah I guess but um, it doesn't really affect us unless you're in it unless you choose to be in it and, and, you know, I just had one question, as I always have that same question. Why? Why are people doing this? And uh, my, 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 my personal development, my years of studying would tell me it's because they don't have a purpose in life to be working towards for them to occupy their minds and feel positive about that so they don't have time for things like this. But that, that would be an unfair perspective to have. It's not just that. 
I realize um, over the last three to four months, the majority of the world has been isolated, like animals, contained in quarantine for their own good. I'm not saying it's not bad. And I do this because, you know, I'm sure there's conspiracy theorists watching. But the point is, it's coronavirus. So we had to stay at home. I remember right in the first week of coronavirus when quarantine hit, I said to myself, this is going to either go two ways. You contain people long enough. They're either going to comply and just, you know, lose all motives or they're going to get go so insane that they're going to want to do anything to feel alive again. And uh, I don't like when I'm right about things that are bad. It looks like two very dangerous emotions have mixed together and the world is responding with it. The, re- the reacting with it, the hu- humanity. And I, I'm just going to strictly speak about America because that's where I saw it all. Um, the emotion of fear because they're staying at home, afraid of dying. But also knowing that at any moment, a coronavirus can get them and they could die. This is dangerous because when you believe this, you feel like you have nothing to lose. So you go, okay, well, if I die anyways, who cares? So you become a careless individual. You lose self-control voluntarily. You say, I don't need self-control because if there's a virus around, I can catch it at any moment, I could die. And then you couple that with a traumatic situation happening like George Floyd. And now you have a lot of people with the chemical of fear in their mind and carelessness mixed with anger, revenge, and uh, hatred. And then you get what's going on in America today. You get hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people (sighs) behaving irrationally, unintelligently, and, uh, and they believe what they're doing is right. I'm not here to say if it's right or wrong. I don't really care. Uh, I don't know if an opinion makes a difference. So I'm not going to share mine about it. What I will say is this. I watched it for about 35 to 40 minutes. I voluntarily watched it. You know, at first my brother's like, have you seen this? I'm like, I don't want to see this stuff. And he goes, well, you know, um, this is happening like downtown Toronto. Uh, there's a, there's also, um, um, what are they called? There was a march. Protests? Yeah. A yeah. protest. Peaceful. In America, they, they forgot the peaceful part. So I watched it, and I was, honestly, I was upset. Like, I drove home immediately after I saw it. And uh, I just sat there and I meditated for an hour. Because when I was seeing all this stuff happening, I thought, like, you know, I'm, I'm a ch- child of this world, too. We're all humans. We're all feeling the same kind of emotions. Like, why does a person have to get to that level? <sighs> where they're being emotionally reactive. And I'm, I'm not saying it's not justified. Everyone has their justification for what they're doing. Black Lives Matter, I see White Lives Matter, I see someone trying to be funny saying Blue Lives Matter. I don't know who that is, but. Blue is blue. Oh, okay, that makes sense. But you know the one I agree with, it says all lives matter. All lives. It's funny because um, diversity doesn't create peace. For all my friends who are watching that are, you know, my condolences to George Floyd and his family and the other um, young black male as well. He was running and they, you know, they got out and shot him. I'm just coming. I'm just learning about this yesterday. You know, my, my, my condolences to them. I just don't go quick to judge. I don't know what he did or what the officer's intention was, what his intention was. I don't know. I wasn't there. Now, if it was as bad as it's, everyone's making it sound, which is just an innocent man got killed, my condolences. I am just confused as to how thousands of people believe that becoming violent about it or to come in and say, don't do something to the people that they believe are the, the threat, how that's going to create a progressive nature in the world. I don't understand that. Like I, I was seeing a protest and they had signs up saying don't shoot. I said so tell them what to do, not what not to do. Say, have you noticed the sign just says don't shoot. And these young people are coming up with don't shoot in front of a cop in their face. That's like me walking up to your face right here and saying don't punch me in the face, don't punch me in the face, don't punch me in the face. It's like you're kind of asking for it. Not justified. It's not not justified, but you're asking for it. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not even saying you're right. I'm just saying you're asking for it. You're asking for trouble. You're not asking for peace. Like, if me and you got into a fight, let's say we're friends, we got into a fight, I want to walk 
in front of your house with a sign saying, you know, don't hate me, don't hate me. I don't, that's not peace. I knock on your door, probably come apologize or ask for communication. I bring you something, I go the extra mile for you. I don't see how holding signs up saying don't shoot in front of cops with rubber bullet guns. That's like, come on. And, you know, what should they do then? By the way, I'm not defending anybody. You know what I am defending? Life. I'm defending life. Humanity. Not an individual. Not a George Floyd. I'm not defending him. I'm also not defending the cop. I'm not defending the protesters. I'm not defending anything. I'm defending life. Life is giving you an opportunity to experience it. And we literally... We ruin it. We ruin our privilege of living when we allow things like this to get out of control inside of us first and then show it outside. If a sign says don't shoot, what should it say then? If you don't want the cops to shoot you, what do you want them to do? Hug you? Love you? Why don't you put that on the sign? Why don't you put that on the sign? Love us. Bringing the focus on the problem doesn't solve it. You have to promote the solution. Or maybe be the solution. A protest, I don't I don't care what anyone says. In my mind, I don't understand how a protest is peaceful, nor is it progressive. When you want something, you don't demand it with signs. You behave in a way where you earn it over time. And if there is a power that is more strong than you, that doesn't want to give it to you, I promise you if you conduct yourself in a way of a person that deserves what you're asking for, and enough people model that, you will get it. And I'm, and I'm strictly speaking like a Martin Luther King, a Gandhi. These men did not fight. They were not violent. That is why they changed how things were. I don't see what part of anything that's going on in America right now resembles any of that. None of it. You guys are literally doing the opposite of what the greatest leaders in history have done to show us how it's done. The opposite. I don't see how robbing stores makes black lives matter more. I don't see that. If anything, you make yourself look more bad. You don't lose integrity because one cop is a bad cop. You don't lose your character because one person did something bad. And then try to make a point by getting revenge. May I remind you something? Or maybe teach it to you because most people aren't taught how their minds work. But for you to do something to somebody else, you must first do it to yourself. I cannot give you an emotion I don't feel myself. If I want you to drink the poison, I have to taste it myself first. That means we both die. What is going on in America right now is, it's sad. Because that's like me taking out a knife and saying, I'm going to go stab you, but I stab myself three times before I can stab you once. Because imagine how much things I have to put myself through in my mind and emotionally in my heart for me to feel so, so bad that I can justify doing terrible things. Like robbing, violence. Yeah. It's just sad. I cried on the way home. I cried because I drove home and I'm thinking, I feel so good every day of my life. If only people knew how good life could be. If only people knew how good life is to us. And the worst adversity you have in your life, the better life is to you if you learn how to appreciate it. I got sad. I'm like, how can I help? How can I help? How, how do I do something about this? Because I feel like I should. I should do something about this. And choosing a side is never the answer. Never the answer. 
Because along the line of those cops you're calling a threat, you're throwing shit at, majority of them are probably good. Even if half or one quarter were good, it still makes it completely wrong. Some of those cops saved someone's life that you would have appreciated and we're calling all of them bad. Amongst the protesters that have graffitied themselves to look like, you know, they're a threat themselves for intimidation, half of them are out there for wrong intention. Either because they're bored or because they want to get something for nothing. Hey, the cops aren't going to catch us. We have every right. Let's go rob Nike now. That makes you a piece of crap. If you're willing to do that with any justification, you are a piece of crap inside your own mind. As a human being, your value is priceless. But your actions with this define you as a piece of crap because only a piece of craps would do such a thing. There's no justification for doing the wrong things. Ever. Even if someone's calling you to do it, daring you to do it, you're worse than them if you say if you respond. In the midst of all of this, when I was watching, my brain works in a way where I go, "What's the real problem here? What is the real problem here?" And I realized, it. I think it's been the same problem humans have always had: generalization. is an unintelligent way to observe things, generalization. We make conclusions with gener generalities. One person does something, everyone's like this. One person is this, like, everyone's like this. One cop is bad, everyone's bad now, every cop. One George Floyd is an innocent man that got killed. Now every person who's with a cop is an innocent man that's being hurt. They're also the ones that actually deserve what they're getting, no? That's just one. These kind of lives matter. Generalization. Generalization and diversification. Diversification. Is that the word? Diversification? Yes. You take a problem, you generalize it, make it big. The problem is you don't do that with solutions. You don't say one person's being nice here, let's just all be nice, then everyone's nice. So you minimize the good things, you generalize the bad things, and then you create diversity to create peace. Please tell me how that works. Please tell me, did you, did you walk through the plan in your mind before you did this? All of you, every single one of you watching. Especially if you've gone protesting, even peacefully. Please explain to me how that works. It does not work. I like to model the things that worked in history. I look at the people that did stand up for justice. When I see Martin Luther King, he had all types of people, millions, standing in Washington Square, the wherever that thing is, in front of the, well, I'm not good with geography. I know that, I just remember the visual of it. The pencil. The what? The pencil. The pencil. Is, is that what it's pencil? called? Is that what it's called? The white stick? Yeah. I don't know. The white stick. It's in Spider-Man, actually. It's in the movie Spider-Man. Sorry. That was inspiring. That man changed the world. Because he proved to people with peace, real peace, by behaving that way. That look, we can all be together. Gandhi wanted to get Britain out of India. He didn't do it by fighting them. He did it by just saying, I'm going to do nothing, just leave. I'm sad. I'm sad because when I was watching these videos of all these people acting completely irrationally, they make themselves look like animals, not like human beings. You are the only creature in existence in this planet that we know of that have the intelligence that you have, the brain that you have, the capacity for potential that you have, the most diverse human system ever, the body system physiologically 
You have the ability to have God's magic hand to create things in your life. You have the ability of choice and freedom and thought. And we literally take a piss on it when we act like animals. Animals are animals for a reason. They're not running the world for a reason. At the very least, we can use our intelligence intelligently. And, and you know, as I sound like I'm accusing, and it sounds like I'm, you know, trying to point a finger, I'm, not, I'm really not at any one person. I'm sad of the human race that that's even possible. But then it hit me, like, there's worse things that that happen on a daily basis. I guess I've never let it affect me in a way until it's, like, close to home, like it's across my border. And it's, like, Western civilization people that I connect to, I relate to, that I see them acting like this way. And, you know, I turn the sadness and the upset into fuel. And that's why I'm, I'm sharing here right now. I mean, if you share this and someone watches this, Maybe it'll help them not do something stupid. The answer is never to get back at somebody. Ever. Ever. The answer is to be bigger. To do what they do not know how to do. If one cop is violent enough to even let someone die, under his own knee. You don't go and do different forms of what he did to him, to George, in other ways to other cops. That is not a lesson. That only shows that you're saying it's okay to be this kind of person. You're not saying it's not okay. You're saying it's okay to have this kind of violence in life. Because we're willing to go with demand to the front doors of a White House or of a police station, whatever, I saw all of them. If there's, only co if there's one comment I want everyone to take from this, is this. Just remember, to give someone poison, you have to drink it first. All the things you're doing to whoever you think you're attacking, whether it's cops, government, white people, whatever it is, whatever you think you're justifyingly standing up against, just remember, whatever you're giving them in a revengeful way, remember this, you're giving to yourself first. You have to allow that emotion, that thought, that poisonous feeling inside of you rot your own mind before you let it even get you to do something about it. You have to let it rot you inside. Because a person who has complete intelligence, peacefulness in their mind, they don't even know how to get to a point where they can even do something like they're doing right now. A person with true self-control doesn't even get to the point to want to go protest, break into a store, throw things at cop car, like this, light things on fire in the middle of a street as if we're barbarians. What does this prove? That we're not as smart as we think we are. We should act smarter, no? You know, like I say, my condolences to the people who have died. But every day people die. Children die, and they get abused in different ways. Middle middle aged people die. Old people die. Those are types of people. Black people die. White people die. Iranians die. Middle Easterners die. Asians die every day. People are going to die. We can't stop that. And they die for very unjust reasons, way worse than George Floyd. George Floyd was, in, as, was on Western soil. He even had the freedom to do whatever he was doing before that day. He's probably living a pretty good life next to the person who has zero in another country that's dying, even though they really did nothing. person who's dying of starvation and thirst, that person gets beat up and killed as well in a different country. We're not protesting for them. Because we can't protest. If we had to protest for every wrong thing in the world, 
no one would be doing anything but protesting the entire day, every day of their life, and the entire cities would be filled with people on the streets because there's too many things to protest about. That's why protesting is not the answer. Protesting doesn't do anything. You might get a couple small wins because you demand something long enough, make enough noise and disturbance that they say, screw it, let's give it to them. But that is not teaching yourself or anyone else any great lessons. If you're raising your own children, you don't teach them to come at the door of your house knocking every day and yelling and screaming with signs telling me, Mom, Dad, give me what I want. Would you raise your children like this? So if you want to teach a child to stand up for things and ask for things in life this way, you shouldn't be doing it yourself. The time spent protesting, making signs, doing all these things, if you spent the same time trying to intelligently come up with solutions and bringing people together in harmony to work towards a solution, becoming the solution, doing things, creating things that can help the solution, you would get something way faster than what you're doing now. Because what you're doing now, if you didn't notice, my friends, is only creating more problems. You're bringing cops out on the streets with you. You don't end a war by starting battles. That's not how it works. So, you know, if you're watching this and you have an opinion about what I'm saying, that's fine. I'm cool with that. Do you know what I see? You know what would be really nice, guys? I see one day where there are more intelligent people on the streets thinking in a harmonious manner, thinking in purpose, thinking with the emotions of God, gratitude, love, inspiration, peace. I, I, I do believe there's a world where this could happen. But it's probably the most difficult thing that could ever happen because people have to put aside the things that they think are them, like their own egos, their fears, their belief systems about why things should be right or wrong or this or that. We can't blame news stations for having negative news all the time. We give it to them. Can't blame CNN. If the world was filled with good things happening, more than bad things, and that's our doing, they would probably report good things more because they notice people want that more. It's because we say we want more bad things happening. We may not say consciously, but we say it unintentionally by doing what we do. I'm gonna answer questions now, um, but I just wanna make sure I, I get my point across. If you're going out to protest, don't. Stay at home, grab a journal. Write down in your journal what you wanna do with your own life first. If you have no idea where your own life is going first, you have no right to be on the streets to fight for other people's lives. That does not make you a leader. You truly want to make a difference, start with yourself and the people closest to you first. And then and only then do you find it inside of you. You're so filled inside of yourself and you're so grateful that you say, you know what? I think I have enough to give to others too. Let me help out. But that's a long time away. Act like the solution. Don't yell it. Don't write it on signs. Act like the solution. Don't preach the solution. You know, you guys want peace, right? You guys want every life to matter, right? You want equality, right? Walk like the solution. Be an example of it. You say, Armin, but that's hard. There are bad people in the world. Yes, there are bad people everywhere. There are also good people. The question is, which one do you want to be? You become one of the bad people if you decide to behave like them. I was having an interesting conversation with people on the weekend. And it was a conversation about when someone behaves a certain way with you, you should behave the same way back to teach them the lesson. I said, you got this all wrong, my friend. The way they're behaving with you, they think is right. Isn't that the problem? That you're saying, look, this person's like this with me. So I'm gonna do the same thing back to them to teach them a lesson. You got it wrong. 
they think what they're doing is right. So if you do exactly what they did to you, they're going to think they were even more right. Because look, now you're even copying them. They have the reasons for doing what they did to you. They said, no, but they have to learn. I go, no, no, no. They don't learn. Just because they treat you a certain way, you treat them back the same way. They don't learn anything. They only learn that what they treat people like is normal then. You're only validating their behavior. They said, so then what would you do? I said, simple. I would do exactly what I would do is the right thing to me. I would go above and beyond for them if they always try to do a little bit for me. Then I show them what it even looks like. And if they don't acknowledge it, that is not my problem. But I'm not willing to sacrifice and cost me my character to try to teach someone else a lesson. Someone comes and slaps me in the face. Person says we should slap them back so they learn. Learn what? That slapping in the face is okay then. I would either walk away and do nothing or hug the person. Either way, it's exactly opposite to what they were expecting. And here's the other thing. Even if they don't respond in a way where they learned the lesson, it does not matter to me. Because what I taught myself is more important. If they slap me in the face and I walk away, I teach myself. I'm a person that does not do that. And the impression I make on myself is what creates my life, not the impression I make on others. So one person dies from unjust action. You do not create a series of unjust actions to teach the generalization of the person you think is the problem, which is all cops, a lesson. You become even more peaceful. You single, you take out all the cops you see that are good, doing good things and go do even more for them. And they go, wow, people are beautiful. Whatever your thinking process, just remember. Conflict never creates solutions. Please tell me one time it did. Never. Conflict might arise a movement. Conflict might create some type of emotional bond with a group of your own type. It might create motivation in you, but it never creates the solution. You're in a relationship. You say, I really want to get closer with you, so let me argue with you every single day. I think it will make us really close. That's not how things work. You don't get close with people in a relationship by wanting to argue and criticize them every day. Connect the dots. It makes no sense. You're doing it by being a loving person to yourself and then to them. Yeah. I have lots of comments on Facebook. Um, I'm not going to read them. Not yet, at least. I'll read them after and I'll respond. Um, just want to make sure I answer questions on the show. But I also know there's it's a controversial topic, so... Um, I'd be here for hours if I decided to respond to people on the live show. Anyways, I'm not making anyone wrong in the situation. I think everyone has the reasons for doing what they're doing. I'm just sad that people um, are doing it. That's what I'm sad about. I'm sad about that. I'm sad people are doing it. Even though it doesn't affect me directly, it indirectly as a human being just makes me a little sad to know there's so much we have to learn still. So much we have to learn still as a human race. But I will say one thing before I move into the question. For the people that are robbing stores to prove a point, I, I don't know what Nike did to you. I don't know what Louis Vuitton did to you. I don't understand that. So um, you have lost all self-respect if you did that. And if it feels okay with you, just know this. If you don't know how to make things right in your own mind about what you're doing, you will live a very miserable rest of your life. You know, you should go and return all the things in that store. Even if someone else steals it, you know you didn't steal it. Terribly poisonous mindset to justify 
criminal action. Terribly poisonous. There's no justice out of that. You're only proving that injustice only exists. That's what you're doing. So, remember these two words. They're the start of every miscommunication and problem. Generalization and diversification. Generalization means you take one thing and you make it a consensus. This one person did this. All people like that person is like this. Interesting. Very intelligent way of thinking there. I'm sure if you opened your own eyes to what you just said, heard yourself, you would say, yeah, that's not really true, actually. Yeah, it's not true. You live like that, you're going to have a terrible life. You're the one paying the price for it, by the way. No one else. No one else has to live inside of your mind. You have to live inside of your mind. So be very careful what you decide to do inside of there. It's like taking a piss on your own pillow, sleeping on it, and complaining about the piss smell. It's your piss, my friend. And divers diversification is the second word. Conflict, disconnection, dividing, never creates peacefulness. I don't know what book you're reading. I don't know what video you watched. I don't know what leader you're trying to model. It has never worked and never will work and never can work. You know, And I speak directly to the people that feel justified for doing bad things right now. And I know you know who you are. There's no BS here. There's no BS. When you hear my voice and you feel something inside your stomach, you know I'm, telling, I'm talking to you then. If you don't feel anything, then you're part of probably the same thinking as me. So I'm not talking to everybody here. I'm talking to just the people that are very upset about the situation and that are handling it poorly. And I keep saying this. I'm just saying it in different ways because I really want you to get the message here. Just because someone else is bad, you don't teach them a lesson by becoming bad as well. You continue to be good so that bad people eventually get drowned out in the noise of goodness. You know, If things keep going this way, I think George Floyd died in vain. No one is justifying. No one's paying justice for his, for his death. He died for no reason there. He died for you to make a joke out of his name. You're fighting for him, right? Fighting for what he stands for, which is an innocent man that was killed for no reason. Well, if you handle it this way, you're proving nothing. He did nothing. Most people say when you die, what do you want people to think of you at your funeral? I don't give a crap what people think of me at my funeral. I care more about what I think of myself at the last breath I'm taking. So if what you're doing makes you feel good about yourself, then so be it. Some of you are very good at justifying. So you can kill a person and think it's okay. I'm sure that cop probably thought this way. That's why we can't blame anyone. I can't blame anybody in this situation. I can only make you a little bit aware of how it is, what, what it is doing to yourself to be this way. Should I finish up? Don't drink the poison to give the poison to someone else. There's no reality where you can do something to someone else and not do it to yourself first. No reality. That counts for negative and positive. That's why it's important to be a good person anyways. Because if you be a good person to a bad person, the bad person might not get the goodness from you, but you get goodness from yourself because you're a good person. A very small percentage of my friends that watch this might think, Armin, there's no such thing as good or bad people. I know. I'm just using the terms I think people would understand when I say that. You identify a bad person by bad things they do, good person by good things they do. Or really, in this world, you identify a good person by the lack of bad things they do. It's like when you say this person isn't healthy. How do you know that this person's healthy? How do you know? They're not sick. Oh, what a great measuring stick. So we measure bad things by how many bad things are happening and good things by how many not bad things are happening. There's no good in anything. Though. If you really got what I just said, that was deep as hell. But that's how the world thinks. And that's why, you know, there's no goodness in their mind. So, my condolences to everyone that's being affected by the people that actually got killed in this. My uh, total disappointment to all the people that are poorly handling this, especially the ones that are using this opportunity to take advantage, stealing, robbing, fighting for fun, just because they're bored. And maybe you might not be consciously doing it, 
But one day when you grow up, you look back, you'll think that, wow, I was really stupid for doing that stuff. Hopefully you'll get there. Or you'll just die thinking this is okay. So it's fine. But if you're an entrepreneur in the middle of all this right now, if you own a business, if you're an entrepreneur and the world is literally tearing itself apart, at least America is, I haven't seen the news in other countries, but I'm sure it's worse. In my own home country, it's terrible, by the way. There's no, there's no good side here. If you're an entrepreneur, I challenge you. Do something in your business that can somehow contribute in a positive form to this world, to what's going on. Don't make it just about your goal or your money. Add inside of that goal just the factor where you can be a good contribution to this world. And do not measure it by what everyone else tells you you should do. You should do this. No, no, no. I'm going to allow the idea to come to my mind on how I'm going to adapt my business to be a positive contribution in this world in the middle of all this crap happening. I challenge you as well if you're an entrepreneur watching this. Do the same. If you like deep conversations, deep content, if you like deep thoughts, then hit that subscribe button on YouTube. That bring you content every single week just like this. And you know, every time something happens in the world, we're going to address it and we're going to address it from an entrepreneurial perspective and a leadership perspective and hit that notification bell so that you get some notifications when I go live. And uh, Facebook, make sure you share this video so that another person can hear. Just one other person hearing this might make a difference in their life. And Instagram, you know, hit this, you know, hit that send DM button so we can get there. Lastly, to uplift the tone of the conversation because I was just upset. Um, Get ready to laugh because I saw a video with Batman on the street in the middle of the protest. I couldn't believe my eyes. I'm like, this is not Batman. My brother's like, yo, someone dressed up as Batman, like full on Batman costume and was in the middle of the street. So I was watching a video with this guy narrating it like, Yo, this is this is crazy stuff, man. Cops running people over. Even Batman came out. I'm like, you know what? It does look like Gotham. It looks like Gotham. <laughs> it looks like Gotham on the street. This guy full up Batman suit, cape, everything. He looks sick. He's like walking. I don't know what he did, but he's like walking in the middle of the smoke, the the, the gas that the cops are throwing out. I, I wish I could see a full video of that. Let's see what he did. Um, that's funny. That's funny. All right. <sighs> What's the first question? Do you think you can teach yourself to have a burning desire? Or is it one of those things where you have it or you don't? Who's this from? Is it anonymous? Anonymous. Put your names in there, guys. I'm going to shout you out. Do I think I can have a burning... Do I think I can teach myself a burning desire or do you have to be... You have it or you don't. Or you have it or you don't. No, no. It's it's something everybody has. Everybody has a burning desire, capacity inside of them. The potential's there. It's not a character trait. Okay, look. When I say I have brown eyes or two eyebrows or two arms... That is a physical part of my body. That is a physical factor. When I say I have kindness, honesty, okay, a desire in my life, that is a that is a personality trait. It's attainable and it's also you can take it out of you. But some of you take this like my arm is the same thing as me being honest. No, no, no. You're not born with honesty. You you get born blank and then you learn things. So desire is a learned thing. Now, here's the cool part. You naturally, your body, your mind, your heart is designed to have desire. Or else you wouldn't be walking right now if you are. Because you see other people that go, I'm going to walk too. That's called desire. And then you start getting up and failing, getting up and failing until you're walking eventually as a toddler. Everything. When you're hungry, you got desire to eat. But when you're talking about entrepreneurship and, and desire, like burning desire, and you're really talking about motivation. In the mainstream world, people call this motivation. I call it desire. Motivation comes from knowing what you want. And really, like when you think about it, you get excited. That's not something you have to teach yourself or that you have or don't have. You just think about what you want. And here's a cool little trick. When I work with coaching clients, I always give them this like tiny like example to help them out. Everybody growing up had a, uh, had a, has a I've always wanted to desire. Every Everyone. And they have probably lists of it. Like when you're going up, you're like, oh, man, when you think about it now, you go, you know, I've always wanted to and then fill in the blank. And if you could do this, take a piece of paper right now, put I've always wanted to and then just wait, see what comes to you and just write it. These are like the deepest desires in your life that you've been neglecting. If you haven't done it or if you have, it's like the deepest desires in your life. That's the starting point of desire for you. Because if you don't know what you want in your life, it's because 
you either lack experience of life, which is very rare. Like there's no way you live, if you're 20 or older, there's no way you didn't go through enough experiences in like, even up until 20 years old or 15 or 12, whatever, for you to at least know a little bit of what you like in life. There's like, but if you really, really, really like lack experience, just go out there and try more things. Like literally join a bunch of jobs, join a bunch of teams and groups and go do a bunch of things. No, like the only goal here is to learn more about what's out there, okay? But majority of the time, people know what they want. And guess why they keep saying, no, I don't know, I don't know. It's because their desire is buried under people's opinions. It's because when they were 17 and they said, I want to be an entrepreneur, the entire world around them, which is like 12 people, their family and friends, they said, you can't do that. That's really hard. That's, you can't do, you're not like this. And they let those opinions become real in their mind. And you know what they say? They consciously look at their desire and go, okay, screw it, then I don't need to do this. And then 10 years later, fast forward, now they're on Clear Talk, they're saying, do you teach yourself that burning desire or? Is it something you have or you don't? (laughs) Is it just something you have or you don't? Now that person's asking me this question. I'm saying, it's inside. Just remove all the opinions that tell you you can't have it. And by the way, here's the worst part. In the mind, majority of the things that are your enemies are not susceptible. You don't notice them. Like, I'll tell you, I'll guarantee you this. 99% of you, 99.9% of you live with fear. You just don't know it. Guarantee you that. Guarantee you. Comment on, comment on my Facebook or Instagram if you don't believe me. I will go live with you, ask you a series of questions, show you the symptoms of the fear, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll show you that you have fear. You think the emotion of fear, like, oh, I'm really scared. That's fear. That's not fear. That's just one part of fear. You live with fear invisibly your entire life. I'll give you some children of fear so you know if you have it. If at any moment on a daily basis you feel worry, you got fear. You feel stress, you got fear. You feel concerned, you got fear. If you don't do something you want to do, you got fear. If you're worried things are going to not work out, you got fear. If you're doubtful, you got fear. If you're skeptical, you have fear. Now you go, but armor, that's not fear. Okay, no problem. Did you study thinking rich for three years? No, I didn't think so. Now, if you did, let's have a conversation. I'll go live with you. I don't care. But I did my homework, and guess what? You know how I know this is true? I spent a lot of time inside of my own self. Isaiah asked me the other day, or no, it was Lauren. Lauren's like, how do you relate to everybody? How do you, how do you always relate to everybody? I feel like everyone you talk to, I mean, every time you have something relatable to them, I'm like, simple. He's like, how do you like understand every single person? You understand young people, old people, this people, that. I'm like, simple. I took the time to understand myself. And you know what I realized, Lauren? Majority of us are very, very, very similar. Same patterns. We all feel the same emotion. You might get a divorce. I might break up with my girlfriend. You might lose, you know, go bankrupt. I might lose the $100 I had left in my account. They might be different situations, but we feel the same emotion. I feel either heartbreak or I feel stressed or worried. So we all are actually very similar because our emotions are the same. Just different circumstances. So the more time you spend to understand yourself, the more you understand other people. Not your beliefs. That's not what I'm talking about. Now I'm talking about your way of how you look at like life because that's always different. That's the only thing that is different about you and other, someone else. How they, what their beliefs are and what they think of other things. It's how you feel. What patterns and habits you pick up throughout your life. majority of us have the same ones. So... You might not think you have opinions bearing your desires down, but I challenge you to make a very courageous analysis of yourself. Sit down and really ask yourself. Ask yourself a series of questions. What do I really want? When did I stop wanting that thing? How come I think I can't have that thing? Do this with yourself and that burning desire, the desire at the very least will start. The desire will pull you through. I'll tell you the difference between burning and obsessional desire right after this example of what desire is. Some of you are like, and I remember actually five, six years ago, I didn't know if I had desire. I was like, do I really have desire? Do I really have desire? And I remember I was like, I don't get motivated. I get bored easily. Or I wasn't, I wasn't like obsessed. I'm like, how do I get obsessed? All these motivational speakers tell me, you got to want it bad enough, you know? You got to want it as bad as you want to breathe. Then you'll be successful. I hear all this stuff. I'm like, but how? How do I want it bad enough? What are you talking about? Like, what do I do? I want it. But like, how do I know if it's bad enough? And, uh, and I realized something, it's none of us get taught how to understand desire, nor have it, nor observe it, right? I mean, no one teaches us in school. No one, like, we don't grow up with, like, the little manual book or the mentor that teaches us 
This is what desire is, Johnny, you know, and follow that desire. No one teaches this until I had a coaching session with Sonny. And I was asking Sonny, I'm like, I really want to help the kids out. I'm going to go speak at the school. And he gave me some examples of like what I can say and talk about. And I'm like, damn. And he gave this one example. And I realized that's the perfect example to explain what desire is. He told me, he goes, you know what desire is, man? Desire is like when you're at school and you got a crush. And you're in the hallway and you see them coming from a distance. And you get that, like your heart starts to beat a little. And you feel the butterflies. And you get all nervous and your palms are sweaty. He's like, that's desire. I go, really? He goes, that's desire, man. Desire is when you have like, and this is one example of a desire. When you're a little kid and like you had this crush with this person and you can't stop thinking about them. And when you're around them, you get all weird. And it hit me, if we just treated our goals in life, our purpose, the things we want out of life, the same way we treated our crush in high school, many of us will have it today. So yeah, desire is inborn in you. You're born with it. Question is, are you going to use it? on a big level because you have desire to wake up and go to the washroom and eat this is desire it's a very survival level desires but do you want to take it to the next level you got to make it a burning desire i'll tell you what a burning desire is a burning desire is when it's all you think about like no matter what you're doing if you're at work and your work is not your desire if you're with family if you're with you know loved one if you're anything no matter what you're doing you're always thinking about it majority of your day like if at the end of every day I asked you to write down the top three dominating thoughts of your mind, two out of three of them should be around your desire. Minimum. And if it's all three, that means it's really a burning desire. I mean, no matter what, you can't stop thinking about your desire. Now, your desire could be anything. For me, it's my goal in my business because I know the goal in my business I have will get me the seeds of all the other things I want in life, right? I have a monetary goal in my business and from that monetary goal, I know who I'm going to become. I know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to have. I know what I'm going to be able to experience in life from that monetary goal in my business. So I've associated a very singular purpose, one goal with my business that can give me all the other things I want. This is how you should set a goal. Because now the only thing that fills my mind is that one goal. It's what I read every morning, every night, like I shared with you guys on the last episode. But when does it become an obsessional desire? And I love this question because because of Isaiah and Lauren that I even understand how to explain it so well. Because one time they said to me, they're sitting here and Isaiah was still working in another job and Lauren still had a, like a part-time another job, okay? And they would come here to work here uh, for the rest of the time. So they still were part-time. And they said, they looked at me and Isaiah looked at me and said, um, um, he goes, but how, how do we know if it's obsessional? Because like, he has a burning desire. He's like, both of them are like, we think about what we're going to do in our life, our goals, and what we're doing here. We Every day we're thinking about it. I said, good, that's a burning desire. Every day you think about it. And he goes, but how do we know if we have obsession? I go, you don't. He goes, really? He goes, we have obsessional desire. I'm like, no, we don't. I know, you know what obsessional desire is? So a desire is like when you just want something. A burning desire is when you want it and it's all you think about. And an obsessional desire is when you want it, it's all you think about, and you've cut off all other options. Now it's an obsession. What do I mean by that? I looked at Isaiah, I said, you still work, don't you? He goes, yeah. I'm like, as long as you have that job, it's impossible for your mind to get obsessed with the goal of working here and what you're gonna do with me. I looked at Lauren, I'm like, you still working? She goes, yeah. He goes, as long as you have that job, it is impossible for you to get to the obsessional level because every time you get up to get obsessed, you have to go to work. So there's no way. You might think about it during work, but it's obsession when you have no other option in your life but to achieve your goal. And that's why they say the emotion of sex, love, and romance is the most powerful because the, the strongest desire in the, human, in the human body is sex. That's the strongest desire. The wanting for sex is like the most strongest desire there is. Desire, not emotion, desire. The most em strongest emotion is love. But the strongest desire is when a man or a woman really wants, you know, sexual expression. That's why so many stupid things happen because a guy who doesn't know how to control his own thinking with uh, when he's like, he wants sex, he'll do stupid things because he doesn't know how to control because it's the strongest desire. But guess what it does to him? It makes him obsessed. When Now imagine you mix a jealousy with love. Oh my God, and in sex, terrible. Because it's the most strongest desire and what they do is they cut off all of their options. I want to be with this person, this person only. It's all they think about, this person, this person only. The moment it, now something comes threatens it, threatens it, jealousy, their whole mind is in shambles. 
I'm good. I'll tell you if it if it goes to one up. So it's only an obsessional desire when you cut off all other options. I go, Armin, that's hard. I go, yeah, I know. Yeah, that's why it's called obsession. It's not easy. And only a very small percentage of the world gets to an obsession level. Those people will do some serious, crazy stuff in the world. It doesn't mean you have to be like them. If you have a burning desire, you'll also get a lot. You'll get very far in life because you'll, it's all you think about. Eventually, you're going to achieve it. But it'll just be a slower journey. If you only have desire, you may or may not get it. Because desire on its own is not strong enough to take you somewhere. It's strong enough to get you to do things, care about it. But the moment it gets hard, you quit. The moment you have another option, ah, you quit. The moment another desire comes or fear comes, it, it's stronger. But see, fear has no chance against obsessional desire. No chance. Because you have also eliminated the option of fear in your mind. But even with a burning desire, if it's all you think about, you can still let fear or doubt come in and go, maybe I can't have this because look, I still have that other option. You see what I'm saying, guys? So especially in entrepreneurship, you know, if you really want to get to your goal faster, I'm not saying it's the make or break, but faster, you must become obsessed. And I just gave you the exact formula roadmap for that. Literally cut off all other options. All other options, you know, with like intelligence. You know, if you have kids, you don't cut off your kids as an option. It's not an option. <laughs> like I'm saying the optional things. Like if you really don't need a job and you know you could figure it out if you were just put on the line, do it. It's a good thing. So at one of the episodes, someone asked me, is it responsible? If, is it irresponsible to quit my job and pursue my passion um, if I have bills and family to in a family? And I said, yes, it's irresponsible if you don't know what you want. But it's totally irresponsible to stay in a job if you know what you want and you're wanting to get and you're committed because now you're just wasting your time in a job. You're, you're holding yourself back. But if you're not clear on what you want, you don't really want it. It's not a burning desire at the very least. Yeah, don't. You have to be at a burning desire to get to obsessional to cut something off. You can't just be at a desire. Now you got all the, you know, motivated idiots. I was a motivated idiot. When I was 17, 18, I came right out of high school. I'm like, I'm going to go straight to business, become, you know, rich. I'm, like, I'm going to get into sales. I, that's how I thought. And I didn't have a burning desire. I just had a desire because I really didn't know concept of life yet. Like I didn't really know what else is out there. So I threw myself in the middle of like an ocean trying to learn how to swim. And um, for a long time, I was like, I was, I had a desire but I kind of had these safety nets where I'm fine. It wasn't like other alternative things to do, but it was like, I was comfortable. I had like family to care of me, this, this. So I didn't have a burning desire. Sometimes I thought about this, sometimes I thought about that. It wasn't until I got really consumed because I kept thinking about what I can get from what I want. I'm like, damn, that'd be exciting. And then I said, screw it. At 18, I flew out, I was 19, I flew out to Vancouver. I lived on my own for four months. I disconnected myself from family, from everything. The only option I had was to succeed. And guess what? The first month and a half was hell. It was terrible. I was terrible at sales. I, it was just bad. I was having a bad time. And then at the last two months of the four months I was there, I made all the money I needed to pay my debts off. I even bought a trip for my family to go to the Bahamas with me. You know, I, I turned my life around because I put myself on the line. There was no other option. I couldn't not make money. I lived on my own. I had to buy my own groceries, everything. You know, so I moved out on my own at 19 years old, living on my own, you know. Um, and the company was taking care of us there. So... You know, you got to be able to do stuff like this. If you can't do this stuff, you can't take these risks, then no, you can't teach yourself to have desire. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's 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 desire. That's my answer for desire. Um, what's the next question? Next question is, do you believe in the term work smarter, not harder? Um... Yeah, I do both. What do you mean? Do you mean like work smarter but like soft? What do you mean? You gotta work hard. Regard okay. Working hard is not the equivalent of working stupid or smart. Those are two different categories. One is based on difficulty. One is based off intelligence. Is that not true? If I say work hard or work lazy, that is a difficulty level of work. If I say work smart or stupid, that is an intelligence level of work. These are two different measurements. These are two different measurements. You don't put them next to each other. That's not how it works. You need to work hard anyways. Anyways. There is no not working hard. What are you going to do? Work not hard? Easy? Are you going to work easy? What's the opposite of working hard? Like not working at all. That's not how I look at it. 
What are you going to do? Like, not kind of work? You can't kind of work. You got to work hard. If you want something, you'll work hard anyways. And here's the trick. When you're working hard, and you know you're doing good if you work hard, okay, and it feels easy. Now, you know you're getting somewhere when your hard work feels easy. Like, to me now, it doesn't feel like hard work anymore to work. And I work like 10, 12, sometimes 15, 16 hours a day. It bounces out, you know. Um, But it's not hard to me. But working smart, definitely. Here's the difference. Work hard no matter what. But you can get a a bricklayer working hard for 50 years of his life and ends up nowhere because all he did was lay bricks. He was just working really hard. But he didn't really have intelligence behind his work. He was just doing something every single day of his life. Like construction workers. That's fine, but you can't do that long term. You're not going to build anything. Or you can work really hard building a business where you have a system now that earns you money, makes you money, makes you, you know, makes you very wealthy. Yes, working smart, you should. Working hard is not even an option. You should work hard no matter what. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so um, yeah, you should work hard and smart. I think Gary Vee even says that in one of his things. Work hard and smart. Yeah, why not? Like work harder than everybody else and work smarter. Not even everybody else. Work harder than you did yesterday. Here's a great question I'll leave you with. Every single day at the end of the day, I, I, I saw Steve Jobs' video where he said, at the end of every day, I used to look in the mirror and I'm going to ask myself, if today was the last day of my life, would I be happy? And if he said no, you know, with what I did today, if I said no too many days in a row, he would change something about what he's doing. If he said yes every day, he knows he's on the right track. And I love that. And I thought everyone kind of has their own ritual. I have a different ritual. I don't think about like if I die today, you know, would it be happy? Because one day he's like, you'll surely be right. Well, he was right. He died, you know, um, super early. I think he could have had more in him. Uh, maybe because death was on his mind. I don't know, you know, whatever it was. But I don't think about like if I die today. Would I be happy with what I did? Oh, no. I don't do that. Why Why think about that? That makes no sense. But I think about this. When I look back at what I did today, could I have done better? That's what I ask. Could I have done better? And if the answer is yes, tomorrow I make up for it and more. If the answer is no, and I feel like the answer is always going to be yes in a way. But some days I'll be like, no, honestly, today I maxed out what I could have done. I'm happy about that. Like I push my limit and tomorrow I'm going to push it even more. But today I really feel like I took advantage of the day and it was productive. Then I go to bed like super happy. Now, here's, a, here's this little secret. Here's the trick. If I even go to bed and the answer was no, I could, I, I could have done better, yes. I still go to bed happy because I was aware of it. Because at least I knew. And so the next morning's workout, I push myself even more. I, I, work, I push myself even more. I love that. My question is, and this is a great question to start for self-confidence, self-awareness, and leadership in yourself to develop it, is start asking yourself, could I do better? Could I have done better with what I just did? If I could, why not do it? Why not? If you could do an extra three reps, why not? If you can work an extra couple of hours, why not? Why? Why not do it? There is no logical reason for not doing it. But you have every gain and logical reason for doing it because it makes it better for you. So, yeah, work hard and smart. So thanks for coming on this episode, guys. I know the majority of the episode was, um, you know, um, the whole thing going on. You know, once again, condolences to George Floyd and all the people else as well that are that have been suffering from this. And, uh, yeah, I really hope you got the message of what I was trying to say. Um, you know, if you feel offended from what I said, then you either didn't get my point because you didn't understand what I was trying to say or you're exactly what I'm talking about. So if you felt offended, then, you know, then maybe I'm right what I'm saying for you. If you didn't feel, but you feel like, you know, conflict with me, you're not getting it because I had all good intention when I was saying it. I'm not trying to make anyone wrong. Um, I'm trying to make you understand you're bigger than this. You're smarter than this. If you want to look at history, look at the people that inspired us. That's what I do. And let's model that. That's all I'm trying to say. At the very least in this world for your own sanity. Model that for yourself. Even if it doesn't affect anyone else, at least it affects you. So I love you so much, guys. Thanks for coming on this episode of Clear Talk, the number one show for entrepreneurs who need clarity. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you get notifications whenever we come out with more content. If you're on Facebook, share this video so that more people can see and hear what the messages are in this show. And if you're on Instagram, make sure you send this off to someone so that uh, they can see this and get some value as well. If you want your questions answered, go to askarmin.com. Submit your questions so I can answer live on the show. And uh, we're going to start innovating the show. I'm probably going to start wanting to bring some people on and stuff like that, which I'm going to be excited about. Um, But yeah, I love you guys so much. Make sure you hit all that like button, the subscribe button, comment. 
Tell me you're here. Tell me your thoughts. Share your opinions. I am open to it. I want to hear. This show is for you, not for me. I'm doing this one hour every single week so that I can share what I'm learning throughout the week so you can get an update of what I'm thinking. And if it helps you, it helps you. If it doesn't, stop watching the show. You can watch other shows. It's not a big deal to me. So I love you guys so much, and uh, I'll see you guys again in the next episode. Make sure you make the rest of your week the best of your week.